This is string day six notes, as we can see up here. And we've made a lot of, um, a lot of string variables, word one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so word one points to alpha, and word two points to the exact same place when you create a string variable in this manner. Word three is e points to the same place as word one. So one, two, and three all point to the exact same place. Now word four points to a different spot than one, two, and three, but they all contain the same thing. Word five points to a different place as word one, two, three, and four, but contains the same thing. <clears throat> so when you use the double equals, word one equal to word two, that's gonna say true. So this is actually a true statement. Does word two equal word three? It's asking, does it point to the same place? And word two and word three actually point to this exact same location, so that's gonna be true. Word one equal to word three? Well, yeah, that's kind of what we said here, but it's pointing to the same spot. It doesn't mean that they contain the same thing. And in fact, they, it does kind of uh, suggest that in this case. So that's gonna be true, but it's answering the question. It does point, those two point to the same thing. Word one equals word four? That's gonna be false because they are pointing to different uh, places, different memory locations. Word four and five? even though they look exactly the same, they're going to be false as well. Now, how do you uh, compare what's contained in those spots? You use dot equals. So dot equals, as long as they contain the same thing, this will be true. So does word one contain the same thing as word five? And that's actually true. So word one and word five both contain uh, the word alpha. So this becomes true. Now with primitive types, uh, those aren't reference variables. So with these up here, these are reference variables. They refer to a memory location. With primitive types, they're not reference variables. They just contain values. So all of these, as long as they're the same, as long as they hold the number three, uh, those are all going to be true statements. Let's look at uh, these two lines. And we have string fun, which is a class. So we're gonna create string fun.java, and we're going to do class string fun. Let's see, uh, we have a constructor, I believe, and the constructor is a string, uh, and that string is Ben Franklin. So let's do this. Let's go private string, and we're working with names. We need a constructor that accepts a parameter that's a string, so public string fun, and I, I need to go up and capitalize this, fun. String name, which is now a different variable than the instance variable. Uh, this dot name is equal to name. I think we have a method, I think it's called initials. We're gonna return the initials of the name, and in this case it's gonna be B and F for Ben Franklin. So I need initials. So public, we're gonna return a string. Initials. Don't need a parameter, that's in the constructor. So let's do this. I need the, the space for, I need the, the index for the space. Let's do int. I wanna know where the space is. That's equal to word, or no, not word, but name dot index of uh, the space. Oop, oop, here we go. No, space. All right, uh, so now I can return. I want to return, first of all, name, name dot substring, the first letter of the name. There's going to be the, that's going to be the B. And then substring, I want, uh, I need name, name dot substring. Um, we need space plus one, because I want the next one. The space will be, be right before the F in Franklin. Two space plus two, and that'll grab one character. It'll grab the F and only the F. It won't grab the R in Franklin. Uh, that, hopefully that runs, let's see. Initials are BF for Ben Franklin. 